Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. Today we're gonna to be going over a healing stick. I have two depending on what exercise you're going to be doing. Will depend if you need one healing stick or if you need two. First, we have to teach our dog what the healing stick is and how they have to respond to it. We're gonna be implementing negative reinforcement. This is not for positive punishment. This is not for corrections. It's one more way we can communicate to our dog what we want and what we expect from them. And this is usually often used more so for precision style obedience and for a focused heal. When I say negative reinforcement, what this means is we turn pressure on when they comply, we turn the pressure off. We use negative reinforcement when we use leash pressure. Remember, this is not a correction. Easy way to remember, negative means taking away, positive means adding, reinforcement means encouraging a behavior to be repeated. So negative reinforcement, the pressure is turned on, when they comply, we turn it off. We have to teach them how to respond. The way I like to start that is by using a place bowl. I'm gonna have Ari put her paws on the bowl and then I'm gonna use the stick. I'm gonna have both of them together but you can use just one for this exercise. And I'm gonna tap either side of her hip and that's going to be the direction I want her to go. So if I push on her left hip, then I want her to shift to the right. If I push on her right hip, then I want her to shift to the left. This helps when we're doing focus heel for the left about turn. It also helps if your dog has a tendency to be a little wide or crab walk as they call it, where they're walking on a slight angle. So this is going to help clean up some of those issues that you may be having. This also helps with the backwards follow exercise and the sit front position. And I'll show you what I mean by that. You're gonna, you're gonna wanna make sure your dog knows the place. And you can see that I pointed to the place and that got her to come over to it. It's some of the other stuff I've been working on with her. This is again, like I said, a form of communication. Whatever comes first is what you're teaching your dog. So when you're teaching them this, if you need to help them learn by luring or doing something else, you can do that. Just make sure the pressure from the stick comes first. So I'm gonna start by doing the pressure. Oh, uh, something I forgot. You also wanna get them used to it. I like to just pet them and reward them with the healing stick while I'm petting them. You don't have to mark or do anything like that. You just wanna make sure they're comfortable being around the healing stick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place it on her side. Boom, she pivots. I mark and reward, or just reward. Yes, good girl. We're not asking for a lot, just a little bit. She feels it, she takes a step to the side. She feels it, yes, she takes a step to the side. And that's why it's negative reinforcement. You see the pressure's turned on. Once she complies, the pressure's turned off. Free. She gets a little excited and she barks sometimes. All right, go climb. Now I worked with her already on this, but this might take a little bit first time you're doing it. You're gonna find you're putting pressure and the dog's not pivoting. If that's the case, you can use your food lure to help get your dog to pivot their back end. But like I said, make sure the pressure from the stick comes first. Now with the backwards follow exercise, I'm simply gonna hold both of them in front of me and I want my dog to walk in between them. This is one way we can help keep our dog straight when we're doing the sit front exercise. Of course, you wanna make sure your dog already knows the sit front and knows a come when called. So we're gonna say come and we're gonna walk backwards. And you can see this is helping her stay straight. Whoops, sorry Ari, I messed up. Free, good girl, Mark. And then we give her a reward. All right, go climb. With heel, I like to have one in the front and one on the side. The one on the side is going to help with her back end. If I need her to pivot to the right, this is going to be very helpful when we're doing our left about turns. We can also use it for our right about turns. What I'll do for that is every time I'm starting to do the right about turn, I you shush it, young lady. I will bring the healing stick to the right as I'm turning as a cue for my dog to let her know we're gonna be turning to the right. So again, these are all just different ways we can communicate with our dog. I also like them to walk backwards when they feel the pressure on their chest. You have to make sure you can get your dog to walk backwards first. She knows to walk backwards when she's in the heel position. All I'm gonna do for this is I'm going to walk with her in heel. I will apply the pressure. Then I will walk backwards. Once she walks backwards with me, I mark and reward. And you're gonna see I'm gonna use it as well when we do the left about turn. I keep the stick in the front to prevent her from forging. Then I use the one on the side to help her if she needs a little bit of guidance pivoting her back end around to make sure she maintains that perfect heel position while doing a difficult left about turn. So we're gonna call her into heel. Our heel, that's not, that's not heel. Our heel, that's better. So heel, we're gonna walk forwards. There's the pressure and then back. Good girl. 
Very nice. Much better. And we'll do the left about. So if I... Good. And then the right. You see how what I do is... Good. Down. Go climb. Free. I'm sorry. It might be a little hard to hear. She's very enthusiastic about training. What I was doing, if you didn't see it, was I was simply, like I said, applying the pressure, then walking backwards. Same thing with the left about turn. Just having that there is going to help prevent your dog from being wide. So once again, this is just a tool that we can use to communicate to our dog. We can also use this for different things such as using it to have our dog sit by placing it on the back end. Once they sit, we turn the pressure off, mark and reward. We can also do it on their shoulder blades. Down, free. What I did right there was I set down, but you notice I started the pressure first. If your dog doesn't know to go with the pressure on something, we can use something that they already know in order to help teach them to go with the pressure. So for this, it becomes a predictable pattern. Every time I place the stick on her shoulder blades, I then say down. After enough of those, she'll feel that pressure and she'll lay down. Sit, or you can do a different form of a physical cue. You could point to the ground, I sit, you could point and then say down. After enough of those, you point to the ground, boom, your dog lays down. This is also very helpful if you have a hard time, you know, doing down a bunch of times. We can use this for the training process by implementing this in a combination with leash pressure. So again, very simple. The concept is to get your dog to go with the pressure, not to push into it, just like leash pressure work. And it's one more way we can communicate as clearly as possible with our dogs because really that's what dog training is. It's being able to communicate with our dogs in a timely manner when they're right and when they're wrong. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Of course, if you have a second, hit that like button, that subscribe and that notification bell, and we will see you guys in the next video. Thanks again.